Hello and welcome to the Coding Bytes. I am Abhishek Parma, and in this video, we are going to solve Infosys pseudo code, which were asked on 30 September 2020. But before starting this video, if you have not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe and press the bell icon so that you never miss any update. So this is our first question. Assume that the array X in the given code snippet contains n elements sorted in ascending order. What can be said about the function a in the given context? So you have given an array X and the array has n elements where n is always greater than 0 and the elements are in sorted order. So you will have to look at this code snippet and you will have to pick any one option. So as you can see in the given code snippet you have a function a and inside this function you have two parameters which are x and n. So x is array and n is the size of array. So if you look at this code there are two variables x and y where x is initialized with 0 and y is initialized with size minus 1 which is n minus 1 and there is a do while loop. Now inside do while loop there is one more variable z and in z we are calculating x plus y divided by 2 which means the mid element of the array. Now by looking at two things in this particular question you can directly tell the answer. So the first thing is in the question that the elements are sorted. And the second thing is z equals to x plus y divided by 2. Now from these two points you can directly say that the first option function a is an implementation of insertion sort because the array given is already sorted so the code is not of insertion sort. Now the second option is function a will run into infinite loop. Now for this particular option you can check the condition given in the while loop which is x less than equals to y. By looking at this condition you can directly say that this loop will not run in finite times. So option 2 is also wrong. Now the third option is function A is an implementation of binary search. Now what is binary search? So binary search is an algorithm which is used to search for an element in the sorted array. And as you can see in the question, the given array is also sorted. So yes, this might be a right answer. But before this, let's see the last option which is function a will always find the maximum element in x. Now by looking at this code, you can very easily say that this code is for sure not for finding the maximum element in the array. And also in the code, we are finding the midpoint of the array. And if you are aware with the binary search algorithm, so in binary search algorithm, we find the midpoint of the array. So our answer for this question is function a is an implementation of binary search which is c option. Now moving to the second question. So the question is your best friend challenges you to make a simple program to add two numbers without using a plus operator. Which of the following pseudocode can be used to beat your friend and win the challenge. So you are given four options and from these four options you will have to tell that which of the function will add two numbers. So this question can be solved very easily by just looking at the options. So what we are going to do is we are going to take each function at a time and we will run the function for some input and then we will see the output. So if any of the function gives the correct output which means if any of the function gives the correct addition of two numbers then that function can be used for the addition of two numbers. So first of all we will take the first function. So for example I am executing this code for given two inputs x and y which are 2 and 3. Now the function call will be add 2 and 3 which means if we pass the value 2 and 3 so we should get the output 5 which is the addition of these two numbers. Now in this code as you can see the first condition is if y double equals to 0. So if our y becomes 0 then it will return the value of x or else the function will be called recursively. So for this particular function call add 2 3 first of all we will have to look at the if condition. Now if condition says y double equals to 0. Now as you can see our y is 3 which is not equals to 0. So for this we will go to the else part and in the else part the same function will be called with some new values. Now the new values will be calculated based on xor operator and and operator and then there is a left shift. So first of all we will calculate these particular operations and for this we will have to convert 2 and 3 in the binary format. Now if you convert 2 into binary so you will get 0010 and for 3 you will get 0011 which is just a conversion from decimal to binary. In the first parameter we have x, x or y. Now on performing x or operation on the given two numbers 2 and 3 you will get 0001 which basically means 1 in decimal system 
and similarly if you perform AND operation you will get 2 in the decimal number system. Now after performing this operation there is one more thing we have to do which is left shift and if you left shift the number 2 so you will get 4. So our new function call will be add 1 4 where the value of x is now 1 and the value of y is now 4. Now similarly for this function call we will again check the two conditions which is if y double equals to 0. So as you can see y is 4 therefore we will go to the else block again and this function will be called again with the new values. Now this time if we find the new values so we will have to perform and operation and xor operation again and for that I have converted 1 and 4 in the binary system. Now again if I perform the xor operation so I will get 5 and if I perform AND operation I will get 0 and also on performing left shift on 0 we will again get 0. So our new function call will become add of 5 comma 0 where the value of x is 5 and the value of y is 0. Now for this function call again if we check the condition if y double equals to 0 so this time the value of y is 0 therefore return x will be executed and the value of x which is 5 will be returned. So for the function call add 2 3 we will get 5 that means the addition of 2 and 3. So we can say this function can be used as an alternative for calculating the addition of two numbers. Now similarly for the given two options you can follow the same process and you can see which options can be used for finding the addition of two numbers. So for this question the answer is first option. Now moving to the third question. So the question is predict the output of the pseudo code given alongside if the value of n is 5. So you are given a pseudo code and you will have to find the output of this pseudo code. So in this pseudo code first of all we have variable n and i. So I am taking two variables n and i and as you can see in the question the value of n is given 5. So I am taking the value of n as 5 and after this the value of i is initialized to 2. So I am taking i and initializing it with 2. Now after that there is a while loop and the condition is i less than equals to n. So this while loop will iterate till the condition is true. So first of all let's dry run it and find the output. So first time when this while loop gets executed so the condition i less than equals to n will be tested. Now this time i is 2 and n is 5. So the condition 2 less than equals to 5 is true. Therefore the two statements write i and increment i will be executed. Now because of this first of all the value of i will be displayed on the screen which is 2 and after that the value of i will be incremented by 1 so i will now become 3. Now after this once again when we check the condition i less than equals to n so still the condition is true because i is 3 and n is 5. Therefore these two statements will be executed again which are write i and increment i. So this time the value of i is 3 therefore 3 will be displayed on the screen and i will now become 4. Now as you can see in the options there is only one option which is starting with 2 and which is option C. So without fully solving this question you can directly say that your answer is going to be C option which is 2, 3, 4, 5. So our answer is option C. Now moving to the fourth question. So in this question you are using the algorithm given alongside to implement a queue by reusing two stacks. What can be used in the place of x to complete the algorithm? Assume that size of stacks is unlimited. So in this question there is a pseudo code which is given for implementing a queue using two stacks. Now if you are familiar with the implementation of queue using two stacks then this question is very easy for you. But if you are not familiar with the algorithm then you will have to understand the algorithm once and then only you can solve this problem. Now first of all in this pseudocode there is a function a which is taking two parameters q and x and in this particular function we have one operation which is push x to stack 1 and there is also a function b which is saying if stacks are empty then error if stack 2 is empty while stack 1 is not empty comma x that means you will have to fill this position x with the given options. So when we implement the queue using two stacks and if stack 2 is empty and stack 1 is not empty then we will have to push everything from stack 1 to stack 2 which is our C option. So the answer for this particular question is push everything from stack 1 to stack 2. Now moving to the last question of this video. So in this question you have given a pseudo code and you will have to tell how many times hello will be displayed. So in this pseudo code in the first line there are four variables j, k, m and n. So first of all I am taking four variables and initializing each with their given values. Now after this in the second line we have a while loop 
having condition j less than k. First of all, we will start from the first while loop where condition is j less than k. So the value of j is 2 and k is 5. Therefore, 2 less than 5 is a true condition. So we will move to third line and in this line again, we have a while loop having condition m less than n. So 6 less than 9 is also a true condition. Therefore, we will move to the fourth statement, which is display hello. So because of this, hello will be displayed on the screen first time. And after that, we have m equals to m plus 1. So m will now increment by 1 and now it will become 7. Now after this, once again, we will check the condition while m less than n. So m is 7 and n is 9. Therefore, the condition is still true. So we will move to the next statement, which is display hello. And because of this, once again, hello will be displayed on the screen. And after this, because of m equals to m plus 1, m will now become 8. Now once again, this loop, will, now once again, this while loop will iterate and we will again check the condition m less than n. So m is 8 and n is 9. Now still the condition is true. Therefore, display hello will be again executed and hello will be displayed on the screen. And after this, because of the line number 5, m equals to m plus 1, m will now become 9. Now this time if we again check the condition m less than n, so as you can see m is 9 and n is also 9. Therefore the condition is false. So we will come out of this loop and now line number 7 will be executed which is j equals to j plus 1. And because of this j will now become 3. Now after this we will go to the line number 2 which is while j less than k. And now on testing this condition we will find that j is 3 and k is 5. So the condition is still true. But if we go to the third line and we again check the condition m less than n. So as you can see m and n are 9. Now this while loop will not execute anymore. And because of this we will come out of this loop again. And the execution of this program will stop. So as you can see because of this pseudo code we have printed hello 3 times. So the answer for this question is 3.0 which is C option. Now I hope all the explanations were clear but still if you have any doubt please let me know in the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe the channel. Thanks for watching.